I've had this job for about four years now. I didn't have a choice after that last batch went sour. I'm not sure if it was a recipe or if it was what we cut it with, but it was a bad batch nonetheless. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I used to be a dealer, well, and a cooker. One of those designer drugs, we called it K-12. It was a kind of a mix between meth, LSD, and Jesus. I kid you not, it was a fucking trip. Anyhow, one of my regulars, a junkie named Nate, was an old acquaintance, aka lab rat of mine, who agreed to help us test out the new batches. He usually didn't have a problem. He could easily take three times what a normal head would and still function well enough to tell me how the new batches worked out. He was reliable like that. I had known him for over five years at this point and he'd never once let me down. Well, he shows up to check out this new batch I just whipped up. I got a small crew who helps me cut it all up and get it ready. My <coughs> receptionist comes through the speakers from the front room and lets me know Nate's in. I leave the lab, change out of my hazmat, and take the respirator off and catch the first whip of fresh air all day. It was wonderful. It felt like a long drink of ice water after I trekked through the fucking desert, I tell you what. So, I grabbed the sample out of the box. It's like one of those little cupboard things that goes between the rooms like when you have to take a piss test or something. And I head out to greet Nate. Nate stood there, looking nervous as usual. He was a tall, skinny, middle-aged white guy missing one of his teeth. He had long, unkept hair and smelt of old fish. He has plenty of problems. Heroin, crack, meth, pretty much anything he can get his hands on. He was a homeless guy, lost his house a while back because of his drug issues. But now, he came to me to test out my K-12 because I let him get the first hit for free. He was a bit reluctant this time. He was mumbling something about trying to get clean. I called bullshit, handed him the pink pill, and he swallows it down. No water. Now, he normally hangs out for a little while on the leather couch, but this time he stood around for about five minutes and had this fucked up look on his face. He then calmly turns around, walks out of the room without saying a damn word. I figured he would come back and let me know how it went after a few hours. Turns out, he barely made it half a block before he keeled over, dead. We caught wind from one of the homeless people on the block that made it corpsed out right in the middle of the fucking sidewalk and there were cops all over the place. He said they were talking to witnesses and one of them had pointed over here. Fuck. It was time to flip shop and get the fuck out of here. I hit the proverbial alarm and shit hit the fan. We started trying to flush everything we could as my people continued to get rid of the product. I bounced out of there, quit the business, and left town. Long story short, it was a shitty batch of K-12 and I'm wanted for murder. Though luckily for me, they don't know my real name. By the way, neither will you, so don't bother. So I'm here, leaving my shitty job as a line cook on the bus heading home for the night. Like I said before, it's been about four years and I'm pretty sure I've managed to evade the police. <laughs> I've gotten away with murder. I don't even feel bad about it. Nate wasn't anyone. He was a bottom feeder, scum. No one misses him, shit, no one even knew who the fuck he was. So I'm heading home, like I said, staring out the window of the bus. It's rainy and cold out. We stopped to pick some chump up, and as we're pulling away, there's this homeless guy standing right on the edge of the fucking sidewalk. I mean, if he were any closer, we'd have been driving over him. As we're passing him, he's staring right at me, like right into my eyes through the tinted windows. Fucking weirdo. He looked familiar, but I see the same group of homeless people time and time again when I ride this damn bus home. It smells of old fish and wet wool in here. I fucking hate it, but it's better than sitting in the joint for the rest of my life. We continued on, and what's fucked up is about a block later, who do I see? That same motherfucker standing on the side of the road staring me down. Again, he looked so familiar, but he looked a little different this time, thinner, paler. We passed him, and I'm racking my brain trying to figure out who the fuck this guy is. Then it hits me. This guy looks just like Nate. Fucking just like him. Of course, there's no way this is Nate. Nate's dumbass is long dead, and... His dumbass is the entire reason I had to give up my cush life for this chump change shit just barely scraping by. Fucking asshole. I shake my head and get those thoughts out of it. Like clockwork, as we're pulling up to my stop, the guy is standing there, staring at me again. Except he looks dead. Like, really dead, and he is most certainly Nate. What. The. Fuck. That's impossible. The bus stops, and I run off that thing so fast I damn near tripped down the stairs and landed on my face. I quickly looked over towards where he was standing, and no one's there. Where the hell did he go? Am I imagining shit? 
I take to myself as I put my fingers on my temples and close my eyes as the cold raindrops cascade down my face. I grab my keys, head inside my apartment building and make my way to my second story apartment. I walk into my shabbily decorated apartment, there's not much to it. A couch, coffee table that I got from my brother and one of those old box TVs from the 90s. My bedroom consists of a mattress on the floor, an alarm clock and two clothes baskets. One for dirty, one for clean. What do you want from me? I'm a 33-year-old bachelor. As I head for the couch, I nonchalantly glance out my window. And there that dirty son of a bitch is again. Just standing there, staring up at me. Except this time, he looked even worse. His eyes were sunken, his skin was gray, and his lips were pulled back from his mouth, exposing the same missing tooth. This was definitely Nate. But how? Why? I do one of those long blinks and rub my eyes. When I open them again... He's gone. I bolt to the window, look up and down the street, but nothing. I can't see him anywhere. I'm losing my shit here. I need a fucking drink, I say to myself as I walk to my kitchen and grab my fifth of Jack out of the freezer. I go to reach for a shot glass and think, ah, fuck it, and take a swig right out of the bottle. I gotta get my mind off this shit. It, it must be stress. Yeah, that has to be it. I can barely make my bills, and playing the life on the up and up just plain sucks. I plop down on the couch and take another swig. As I feel the heat of the whiskey working its way down my throat, I hear a sharp ringing in my ears and my head starts to pound. I set the bottle down and I cradle my head in my hands. I, I need a shower anyhow. Maybe I should just wash up and get some rest. I make my way to the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror. I look like shit. Bags under my eyes. My skin looks a little pale. I wonder if I'm getting sick. I open the medicine cabinet and grab out the bottle of aspirin. I grab two of them and swallow them down. No water. Fuck this headache. I notice a dank smell in the air like old fish or something as I close the medicine cabinet. As soon as I look up, I see the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. It was Nate, but it wasn't Nate. One of his eyes was hanging out of his head. There was hardly any skin on his thin emaciated face. His teeth had become thin, long, and razor sharp. He stood directly behind me with the slightest of grins on his deformed, rotten mouth. Shirley had been dealing with a nasty leak coming from the ceiling of her apartment for days now. It smelled rancid and it was a thick, brown liquid. She touched it, running the slimy substance between her fingers and realized that it must be some sort of sewage backup from the apartment above her. She felt vomit coming up and rushed to her bathroom. She turns on her sink and starts washing her hands and can't hold back to vomit any longer and throws up in her sink right then and there. A bit angry now, she goes up to the apartment above her. Joey had normally been a good neighbor. Quiet, never had any company, and only went to and from work. He had lived above her for about three and a half years now, and he was always polite when passing in the hallway. She knocked on the door and listened. Nothing but silence greeted her. He must be at work, she said to herself. I'll just have to call the landlord. Shirley makes her way back down to her apartment forgetting about the pungent smell emanating from the nasty sewage leaking from her ceiling. She nearly gags again at just the thought of her previous encounter with the liquid. She sits down on her love seat, grabs her phone, and starts dialing the number for Mr. Nelson, the landlord of the building. Hello? Mr. Nelson answered with a tired but friendly tone. Mr. Nelson was an elderly man in his late 60s. He was short and plump, but almost always wore a smile. He was very friendly and understanding to his tenants, almost to a fault. Yes, Howard, this is Shirley Wilson from apartment 4A. I seem to have a problem. Oh, Shirley, it's good to hear from you. What seems to be the problem? Is everything all right? How is your father doing? I hope he's doing better. Mr. Nelson replied. Yes, Dad is feeling much better, thank you. The pneumonia has cleared up and they released him from the hospital. But, Howard, I have a serious problem here. There seems to be a sewage leak coming from 4B above me. It's leaking from my ceiling, and it smells horrible. I need you to come do something about it before it ruins my carpet, Shirley pleaded. Oh dear. All right, I'll go have a talk with Joseph and find out what the issue is right away, Shirley. Don't worry, assured Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson made his way to apartment 4B. Joseph had always been a good tenant, never causing any trouble, despite the fact he was three days late on this month's rent. Mr. Nelson was going to cut the poor kid some slack because he knew the young man didn't make a lot of money and maybe something had come up. He knew he normally was home at this time. 
Mr. Nelson approached the door, giving it three sturdy knocks and calling out, Mr. Domingo, are you in there? You seem to have a leak in your bathroom. But he received no reply. He knocked again. Joseph, I need to fix this leak. I need you to answer the door, please. I'm sorry to intrude like this. Still no answer. Mr. Nelson decided he would use his key to unlock the door, announcing he was coming in as he opened it. As soon as he opened the door, he noticed a horrible, rancid smell. A smell he knew. It was the smell of death. He made his way around the apartment. Everything looked in order. There was a bottle of Jack Daniels sitting on the coffee table, and all the lights were off, save for the light coming from under the crack of the bathroom door. Mr. Domingo? It's Howard Nelson, your landlord. I need to go into that bathroom and have a look at a leak from your toilet, he called out. No answer. He made his way to the bathroom door, and as he did so, he noticed the smell became stronger. He started to get worried. He thought maybe the young man had died in the bathtub, or maybe slipped and fell hitting his head in the shower. That would explain why he had been late in the rent. He hung his head, feeling pity for the young man, and he approached the shut door knocking on it one last time and solemnly saying, Joseph, if you're in there, please say something. I'm going to have to open the door. Again, the only reply he was met with was silence and the rancid smell of decayed flesh, even invading his taste buds with a sour sting. He slowly creaked open the door and inside was something of horrid nightmares. The walls, ceiling, and floor were painted with gore. The blood of Joseph Domingo covered every square inch. More blood than you could ever expect to come out of a human body. Intestines and other chunks of flesh and bone fragments stuck to the walls and ceiling. They had nearly dried there as the blood coagulated into a thick slime. Parts of muscle and skin draped over the toilet, sink, and bathtub. Mr. Nelson stood horrified gazing around in pure shock when his eyes <gasps> Joey's eyes, sitting on the edge of the sink, staring up at Mr. Nelson, meeting his gaze. Mr. Nelson fell backwards out of the bathroom, barely able to even let out a shriek of terrified horror. His eyes broke with his former tenant's deadly stare and wandered up to the mirror, scratched into the glass through the blood and flesh stuck to it, were the words, What goes around? comes around.